I think the defund notion is misguided and, in my opinion, wrongly places blame for all of society's problems on police. Town leaders hold the first of four community discussions, joining the nationwide debate on racial inequality and policing. This just three days after a passionate rally at Town Hall, where several speakers spoke to what they call systemic racism in their everyday lives. ACMI News was there. We talked to the town manager and get his take on the racial issue confronting every main street in America. And we get the latest on how Arlington slowly opens its doors for business in the midst of COVID-19. July 9th at Town Hall, that's the date and place the Board of Registrars has set for the recount on the June 6th town election. There are three races to recount, select board, and town meeting terms in precinct 6 and 17. No porch fest this year, but there's the next best thing, bubble fest makes its debut in the town, trying to stay creatively connected in this extraordinary year. There are currently 304 positive cases of COVID-19 in Arlington, 44 deaths. All this as Arlington stays together apart. From McLennan Park to Spy Pond, from Poets Corner to the Mystic River, we have Arlington covered. We're your neighbors, a friend you can turn to. This is ACMI News. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of ACMI News. I'm Jeff Barnd. Part two of phase two in opening up the state of Massachusetts is now in effect with enough flexibility for each municipality to use good judgment in getting businesses rolling again in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. The town of Arlington is also opening up a dialogue with its residents regarding race, racial equity, and systemic inequality. Now, this of course comes in wake of the unjustifiable death of George Floyd on May the 25th in Minneapolis. And that was at the hands of a police officer who now has been charged with second degree murder. Well, an area rally called Arlington Activates was held earlier this week, and it drew more than 300 people to town hall. It featured several speakers, among them students of color from Arlington High School. And the topic was racial inequality that they see in their everyday existence. And after what the world has seen since George Floyd's death one month ago, they say it's time for solutions and that enough is enough. Black student leaders at Arlington High School held a protest in front of Town Hall, which drew a crowd of more than 300 in the sweltering summer heat. You were thinking about the hot summer temperatures. This was a three hour peaceful protest to address what they call systemic racism within the Arlington public school system. We need to decolonize the, the, the history system. We need to learn more about black history. Everyone should know more than just who Martin Luther King is and that slavery existed. It goes back so much more than that. Our school system needs to touch on who Marcus Garvey was, who Medgar Evers was, who other people were. The civil rights system in particular was bigger than Dr. Martin Luther King in Rosa Parks. It was so many more individuals. And they were remembering the countless African-American victims whose lives were cut short because of blatant ignorance, brutality, inhumanity. Freddie Gray, Eric Gardner, Trayvon Martin, George Floyd. Today is the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. There is an eclipse tonight. And you stand here where? In Arlington, Massachusetts. Arlington? That's what I said when I got the call. Arlington? We stand in Arlington, Massachusetts. You are here to lend your support. You are here to stomp out systemic racism. You are here and we thank you for being here. Give yourselves a hand for being here. There were a lineup of speakers attesting to their own and sometimes hurtful experiences, just trying to find their way through everyday life. 
I want us to make sure that this is clear before we continue on with today's events. Our purpose of standing out here on this hot day is not to condemn or call out certain individuals or systems within Arlington Public Schools. Everyone and everything has room for growth. By standing here today, we want to address these issues and work towards something better, and in doing so, we need the help of all of you. Thank you. Now's not the time for it to become a black and white issue, but it's an issue for everyone to come together on. It's no longer that black people, because it involves them, they should be the only ones fighting. We need our white allies because they are people who can easily reach government. They can, they have, sometimes they have higher standings or the standings that they have can help us and help us achieve our goals. So this is just kind of breaking point almost of George Floyd him saying he can't breathe, him calling for his mother, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, and just, it's just so sad that like, it keeps on happening month after month, week after week. So it's, this is just the breaking point where we just want change now. If we're gonna be a community, it's not just gonna be the black community that makes this happen. This is not black versus white. This is humanity versus racism. This is humanity versus systemic racism. This is love versus hate. We need to understand that, that this is a time for all of us to come together as people, and we need to change the world that we are in. The repeated killings of black people in the United States serves as a reminder, an unnecessary reminder, of the violence, the injustice, and systemic inequality black people have had to face in this country in every sphere of their lives. For instance, black people are far more likely than white people to die at the hands of police. They're more likely to become unemployed, be undereducated, and as COVID-19 has laid bare all too clearly, they are far more likely to suffer the burdens of ill health. Rally goers here today say it's time for many, many of us, many Americans, to put their biased and well-documented opinions aside. Just sit down and listen to what everybody has to say. Understand that there's a system in place and understand that you perpetrate it. You're part of it. We need to change it. But first, just listen to the voices that are crying. Listen to the voices that are in pain. Listen to the voices that are angered. If we want to change, we need people and in power to listen, but we need to understand that it might not come from the president, it might not come from Congress, it has to come from our communities, it has to come from our local state government. We need to change, we need to vote, we need to understand that our voices are heard, but we also just need to listen and listen to each other and listen to what is going on. I have two younger sisters, one of them's 14 months younger than me, one of them's six years younger than me, and I'd never ever want them to feel the way I do. So we need to talk. It's long past the time to talk. And even when we talk, everyone needs to listen. It's no good if we talk and it goes in one ear and out the other. They need to listen and they need to change what's going on. I do not want to cry anymore. I do not want to fight the same thing over and over again. I want to fight for change. I do not want to dwell on the past. I do not want to dwell on the pain and anger for over 400 years we have been facing. I'm here to reform Arlington Public Schools. I am here to reform the community. But I am here for change because we are tired of seeing young black men and women get shot and killed. We are tired of them having, having to be isolated and not hearing their voice heard. It is hard. It is hard, but we will not stop fighting. We will keep on going. And I'm very glad that all of you guys are here today to support me. I'm here because I think we've all just watched this happen like year after year. This is not even close to enough, but like I think it's just reminding people like once you've done this, that's when you just start sending emails to your representatives and calling people and signing petitions and donating, but it's just like a great way to let like the town know and everyone know that like this isn't gonna stop anytime soon. Among those in the crowd, Congressman Joe Kennedy III, who's challenging Senator Ed Markey for a Senate seat come November. Kennedy's people told ACMI News he just came to quietly observe, but that he was absolutely moved by the speaker's accounts and it reminded him of why his family joined this fight so long ago. 100 years of delay have passed since President Lincoln freed the slaves, yet their heirs, their grandsons, 
are not fully free. They are not yet freed from the bonds of injustice. They are not yet, not yet freed from social and economic oppression. And this nation, for all its hopes and all its boasts, will not be fully free until all its citizens are free. So I'm obviously very proud of the contribution my family's made, but I think they would be the first ones to say that obviously our work is incomplete, that 52 years after 1968, one of the most tumultuous years in our history, we are still having the same conversations and still in a quest for healing. Uh, and that this has got to take more effort and more engagement and more courage on behalf of everybody, but in particularly white America, to, to, to recognize the fact that if we are going to actually address these issues, we have to be far more deliberate and intentional and aggressive about doing so. A lot of the people here, uh, Black Lives Matter, a lot of the groups are saying, look, you have biased opinions uh, with other races, not uh, African Americans, but you have biased opinions that have lasted for years. They haven't got us anywhere. All we want you to do is listen. Why do you think that's so hard for a lot of our society not to get? Look, I, I think that's, that's where this starts, is it starts with recognizing the fact that um, the history is the reality, the lived experience, obviously, that I have. You know, I'm, I'm a very privileged white guy. It's going to be different than an experience that other people have. Um, I mean, you learn about the Civil War and Reconstruction and Jim Crow and the Civil Rights Movement, but the Fair Labor Standards Act, the GI Bill, the Fair Housing Act, the, the myriad ways the local zoning laws that we still codify and, and prevent true lived equality and, and access to economic and social justice largely based upon the, the calcification of racial disparities and that's got to change no peace no peace no peace after the rally at town hall protesters then made their way to mill street and millbrook drive finally ending their three-hour rally in front of Arlington High School. Banners were then attached to the red construction barrier currently lining the sidewalk along Mass Ave. Then, protesters dispersed peacefully. But the movement and the fight for long overdue solutions endures. No peace! No peace! We are confronted primarily with a moral issue. It is as old as the scriptures and is as clear as the American Constitution. The heart of the question is whether all Americans are to be afforded equal rights and equal opportunities. Whether we are going to treat our fellow Americans as we want to be treated. In wake of this extraordinary year and the hot button issue of race, the town has scheduled a series of four community discussions regarding race, racial inequality, and policing in the town of Arlington. The first took place June 23rd, titled Calling Out the Issues, a time of reflection and action, which explores and discusses the roots of systemic racism. I talked to town manager Adam Chaplain about this series of community discussions, what he hopes to get out of it, and how the town is dealing with part two of phase two in opening up Arlington in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, our case numbers have definitely plateaued, uh, but in a, on a call with the Director of Health and Human Services this morning, she is also you know, preparing us to expect more cases now that we're starting to open up. And I think that tracks with what we're seeing in other states that have opened up faster than us. Um, I think we're doing it much more smartly and appropriately than unfortunately some of these states are. But, you know, we're seeing in the Carolinas, in Arizona, in Florida, um, you know, cases are in some cases spiking uh, and going up as things open. So we, we're anticipating that will happen. I think the hope is that with face coverings and with good social distancing practices, it can be contained and controlled. Uh, and not inundate the hospitals. Uh, that seems to be the goal uh, that, that we're following here. So um, I think that's, you know, we're trying to remind people that, you know, COVID-19 isn't over. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, the pandemic's not off and summer's not on, that we, you know, we're still in something here that we all, we all need to be vigilant, but we all need to pay a lot of attention to. 
uh, we'll start to see indoor dining open, personal care services open. Uh, I don't know that we have any of these in Arlington, but um, dressing rooms and retail stores, uh, we probably do have some that, I'm, that I've never used before, but uh, so there'll be more and more uh, interactions and opportunities to uh, patronize local businesses. So yeah, there'll, there'll be more opening, uh, which means more attention to be paid by our local board of health to make sure things are be done, uh, being done safely. Um, and then again, yeah, more, more risk. So I think my message would be, we really urge, are urging people to stay vigilant, wear that face covering if at all possible, uh, you know, as much as possible and, and do your best to continue to slow the spread. All right, changing gears now, uh, the town has set up uh, a series of four discussions regarding race, um, racial disparity um, and policing in Arlington. Uh, this obviously is coming on the heels of what we've been all witness to in the last four weeks. Do you think this is a good time to keep this discussion alive? Simply because um, we've seen so many of these cases before and it's been on the front burner and two weeks later it's forgotten about until the next one. This one seems to be sticking around. I completely agree and I, th I think you and I have talked about this in past week's interviews as well that some something has caught the zeitgeist of really it seems like the whole country about these issues, rightfully so. Um, you know, it, it's a shame to some degree that past tragedies hasn't caught more people's attention, but we've got it now. We have people's attention. And, and these, are, these are dialogues we've been having in town for a long time. Um, you know, in some cases, decades, more specifically over the course of the past several years, um, bringing in the race equity and leadership division to train town employees about uh, issues of racial equity and justice. Uh, Chief Flaherty bringing in the Visions Incorporated group to do a cultural assessment of the Arlington Police Department. These are all things that were put into motion before the pandemic. And now, the, you know, the pandemic kind of threw all of us off of our access, uh, access a little bit. But now, um, you know, we're, we're coming back to something that resembles a normal life. You know, we're still meeting virtually, but uh, things are, you know, people, I feel like people's uh, pace of, of life is allowing them to refocus on more than just the pandemic. And as you said, given everything that's happened in the country, the time is now. Uh, one of the topics I understand that's going to be brought up on the 23rd of June, Tuesday, is school data and racial disparity. Um, there was a huge rally, as you know, on Saturday, June 20th. More than 300 people turned out. It was very hot. No one cared. They wanted to be there to hear the message. So how important is it to drive that home that Arlington has a lot of work to do? Primar well, not primarily, but in part with the school system. I, I mean, I think we, we need to look everywhere that it exists, right? Wherever there are disparities, wherever there are instances of institutional racism, we need to, we need to, to root it out and figure out how to fix it. Um, I wasn't able to go on Saturday, but I did watch some of the video as streamed by the Mystic Valley NAACP. And what I heard and saw was very powerful. It was the real life experiences of people of color attending the Arlington Public Schools. And it's probably hard for, you know, it's hard for me to hear. I'm sure it's hard for school administrators and teachers to hear, but we have to hear these things if we're gonna fix it. And, and that goes beyond the schools, right? It can go from simple departmental interactions between town employees and residents. They can go to policing, certainly, uh, it, but it can go to anything. It's hard to hear it. It's hard to hear simple criticism. Never mind criticism that, uh, you know, insists that you've been part of a racist system, right? Those are hard words to hear. Sure. But like you said, we have to lean into the discomfort. We have to hear these very difficult things. And then we need to find the solutions, right? We need to find ways to make it better. And you can see my interview with the town manager in its entirety on the ACMI News Facebook page. Or you can go to the town website, of course. Go to arlingtonma.gov. Motorists in Arlington will be seeing some changes if they're heading west along Massachusetts Avenue in the early evening hours. This after a bicyclist was killed nearly two months ago at that intersection. Motorists can no longer make a left-hand turn onto Appleton Street as they head west along Mass Ave. This rule, which took effect June 16th, forbids motorists from making the turn between 5.30 and 8 p.m. every night. This after a pair of car bicycle collisions, one of which took place in the month of May, when a Cambridge motorist suddenly struck and killed bicyclist Charles Proctor and seriously injured another fellow bicyclist. A memorial for Proctor is now in the works for this area as the town now undertakes a survey of the driving habits of motorists going in and out of this unusually laid out intersection. In the meantime, the 5.30 to 8 p.m. traffic regulation will remain in effect until further notice, according to Arlington Police.
There was another non-fatal car bicycle collision earlier this month. That is still under investigation. Well, COVID-19 has put the damper on so many events in Arlington this year. Porch Fest 2020 was among the COVID casualties. So the Arlington Center for the Arts announced Bubble Fest this year. The event was held earlier this month, and it was a chance to virtually showcase the talents of many of Arlington's residents as most of us remain cooped up in our homes. Now, because the ACA couldn't present Porch Fest in these times of social distancing, residents were challenged to forge their own stage and be very creative. And as you'll see, they certainly didn't disappoint. The folks at the Arlington Center for the Arts say living inside a bubble, which many of us have been doing going on roughly three months now, can be lonely but bubbles are transparent. We can still see our neighbors feeling inspired and being creative in so many ways. It's what Bubble Fest 2020 is all about. of work is a man, how noble in reason, how infinite in faculties, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel. Tell you to be careful and keep your count, find your servant girl. Who knows, maybe Bubble Fest will become part of an Arlington tradition along with Porch Fest. Carefree, creative, expressive, art. Pandemic, what pandemic? The pandemic has caused many of us to be creative, of course, and Bubble Fest is proof of that. And once COVID-19 thankfully passes, hopefully soon, Bubble Fest and Porch Fest may coexist in the future. We just have to see what 2021 has in store for all of us. Now, you'll recall Arlington High's class of 2020 had a virtual graduation ceremony, followed by a fantastic caravan that rolled through town akin to a ticker tape parade. I'm not sure who had the most fun here, the graduates or the folks lining the streets cheering them on. Well, not to be outdone, Audison Middle's eighth grade graduates staged their own caravan last week, and it snaked through Acton Street and Appleton Place. Now, we're going to leave it to you to decide yet again. Who had more fun here, the graduates, the parents, or the teachers? This is gonna be a tough call either way. Here are the sights and sounds now of the Audison grad caravan. It was a lot of fun. Wish them the best going up to the high school or Minuteman. The great what you, kids. What do you think about this year? Uh, the fact that it's been so unusual that you can't have the regular, ordinary graduation ceremony. Oh yeah, it's been really hard, to, you know, missing the connection with the kids. Um, but we're glad we're able to just do this and, and show them that we're proud of them and um, do something a little bit special for them because we know they're missing out on a lot. How you doing? Good, how are you? Congratulations. Thank you.
grateful that everyone took the time to set this up. I think the kids deserve it. Um, teachers are having fun here, just seeing each other again, and uh, it's a great, great way to end an unconventional, difficult year. So. And uh, I take it you're the Spanish teacher, correct? CC. Si, si. Ready? Everybody, shake it off! Come on! Shake it off! Shake it off! The street, the I am! Summer's here, the time is right. The time is right. So what, what's going on here? Why are you so happy to see these kids graduate? Because they had such a weird end of the year, and I really, really am glad that we get to say goodbye to them. Because we miss them terribly. I told you it was going to be tough to see who had the better time, the teachers or the students, the parents, or the drivers for that matter. Now, if you want to see stories like this, all you have to do, of course, is go to the ACMI website, acmi.tv, and click on newscasts. There you'll see our latest newscasts and the stories we're doing each and every week. If you want to see the stories that we're doing on a daily basis, what you can do is go to the ACMI Facebook page. And if you want to see what the town is doing in response to the COVID-19 crisis or what's been going on with a series of racial community discussions, all you have to do is go to their website, arlingtonma.gov. That'll do it for this week's edition of ACMI News. Thanks so much as always for joining us. I'm Jeff Barn. Please stay safe. If you can, take care of others and then dry them, you know, when you're done. We'll see you next week. Take care. You can always check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ACMI News. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You'll find us at youtube.com slash ACMI News. If you have any news tips for us or wish to become a citizen journalist, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by ACMI Studio A at 85 Park Avenue.